Here's a scripture. This is Isaiah, Isaiah's, Mitiraf, um, Guter, Guter, uh, Haya, Cement. And we start with verse um, Mitiraf, actually. Yeah, the Mitiraf 28, chapter 28, verse 9 to 10. Because the proper pronunciation of the Ethiopian silver currency, in case it might have been heard differently, is a uh, b uh, b b uh, bur, bur, bur. You understand? It might have sound like bur or bur, and might one might confuse that sound. But this verse comes to mind when I think about that. But practice does make perfect, and iron does sharpen iron. So give thanks for that that pronunciation update. And um, I share that with my brothers and sisters because, you know, practice makes perfect. And some things we might have right, but some things we need to practice and perfect it. So when we're talking about the silver currency, just bring you forward to this. We'll continue. We had to stop for a moment, pause for a moment, and just fact check the proper pronunciation of the silver um, currency, otherwise known as the bur. The bur, bur, bur. You understand in the in the Amharic, the royal Amharic, and in the Gutters, um, the Ethiopic, and in the Hebrew, this Torah portion, portion number twenty-one, is dealing with the shekel. You understand, or the shekel, the shekel in the Hebrew, and we gave this comparison right here. So the beginning part of the Torah portion is speaking of this atonement. This is an atonement memorial. So here we have um, these two samples of the silver currency, and we was pointing out how Ethiopia maintained that currency. And part of the revolution, or part of the coup, rather, the creeping coup, the Illuminati coup against Ketamawi Haile Selassie, was due in no small part to the fact that he would not um, sell out the basis and foundation of the silver God-given um, covenant economy based on the silver to fiat money. Fiat money basically means print any amount of money, tell the people whatever, you know, like they do with the West, where people got a lot of paper, but the paper doesn't even say you can get any silver or gold or anything from it. You know, the old notes were not promissory notes, but were actually bank notes. You could take that to the bank and get that much in in silver or in gold, in real, like, bullion, in real wealth, not the paper wealth. So there's a very interesting point here in the Torah concerning economy. It's the first step towards our own economy overstanding it in the tabernacle sense, overstanding it in the in the realm of the Kedus. And from the realm of the Kedus, or the holy, it begins to emanate through our hearts and our minds to the greater society and how we, how we do business with one another and the integrity that we do business. So here you have an example of, yeah, Ethiopia Mengist Bank, and ye Ethiopia bur, bur, bur. That we got to practice that. Bur, uh, bur. So we have the and, bur. You understand all the one dollar note right here, the front and the back of it. And as we said, once again, the revolution against his imperial majesty was in no small part due to the fact that he would not change over the economy, the basis of the economy, to fiat money. And many of the intellectuals who were educated in the West, and some of them getting compromised by the Lunar Nutties and the Illuminatis and the Freemasons, even some of them violating Ethiopian law and joining these, um, these foreign fraternities, basically undermined their own economy, uh, undermined the, the monarchy, undermined Ethiopia, and basically has brought it to the present um, state that it's in, while His Majesty had raised it to the state that it was. So 
this is another point that's connected with it that hopefully we'll get into this a little bit more because this document we have open right here is called Ethiopia Bur 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 right Bur and the Bible code. But I want to take you to the scripture for a moment concerning the pronunciation, concerning the language. And and we all have to make those baby steps linguistically speaking. Once again, the hard Bible homeschooling is an excellent way to begin with the basic uh, fidel. But this scripture here, this is Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 28, um, verse um, 9. We'll go to 9 to 11. 9 to 11 says, O Katin Leman Yastem Rawal Ois Were Mastwalin Leman Yusetal O Tatin Le Tawu Ois Tutin Le Talu Nawin Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand or comprehend doctrine? It says, them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the, from the breast. That's a very important point right here because in the New Testament, in, in Hebrews, it would tell us that, um, that like the Torah is like is like the mother's you know it's like the mother's milk it's like the the basic foundation we're, we're born again remember Yahweh said I've called my son my son out of Egypt so we have even from the the exodus of the Beta Israel we have that process of coming out in the sense of the world coming out but being born again there's a whole birth again process now here in verse uh, 10 it says, To Izaz, but to Izaz. To Izaz, but to Izaz. Sarat, but Sarat. Sarat, but Sarat. Tikit, but Zi. Tikit, but Ziano. For precept, which is to Izaz, which is command, but to Izaz. And here's what we have in the book of. Exodus or read the Sa'at. We have command on command, precept upon precept, precept upon precept. It says line upon line or Sar'at, which is say like regulation, ordinance, order. But Sar'at, line upon line, line upon line. It says here a little, Tikit Bazi, Tikit Baziano, and there a little. But here's the key, here's the penultimate verse right here. It says in verse 11, it says, Be'ba'id, Be'ba'id af, Be'liyum lisan, Lezi hizb yinagara, Arsum, Arrest yihichnat, For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Because you know our tongue is not natively Ethiopian tongue, and mainly about, so he gives us that gift of the new language, but it, it is a stammering lips. It's another tongue. We're speaking to the people. And what are we saying to the people? Ereft, not That this is she. This is rest. And the senbet, the Shabbat, is that rest. It says, to whom he said, this is my rest. Yedekamawin asarfu yihichim marefianat alacho. And gin. Mesmatin Indi Alu to whom he said, This is my rest, wherein ye may cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. Yet 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 what? They would not hear. And we're gonna find in this particular Torah portion that contains the golden calf, the sin, the chatiyat of the golden calf, that it was such and in this present time at the end of the gentile world dominion we see the very same thing while the gentile dominion the world system is ending people think it's somehow going to restart again they must not be recognizing the signs of the time or interpreting it quite correctly but the word of yahweh the word of sustainer was to them precept upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, line upon line, here a little and there a little. Why? That they might go and fall backward. 
and be broken and sneered and taken. Silezi hedo wadhala ndi awaduku ndi sabrum tet emda wema ndi yazo ye egiziavi herak ala te izaz be te izaz te izaz be te izaz sharat be sharat sharat be sharat tikit be zi tikit be ziya yona chual. Wherefore hear the word of. Yahweh, hear the word of the Lord, ye scornful men that rule this people which is in Jerusalem. Now this word, this word is speaking about all this counterfeit black so-called Christianity. You understand? Those are the people which are in Jerusalem. And the preachers and pastors are these scornful, these scornful men. Now we're going to learn about these scornful men in this particular Torah portion, Reading and Feeding. You see, because these scornful men rejected, they were impatient with Moses. You understand? They were impatient with Moses coming down from the mountaintop. They, they thought that they didn't know what had happened with him. In other words, Moses, they even admit that Moses was the one that brought them forward out of Egypt. This man, but they said they don't know what's happened to this man, Moses. So you know what we need from Aaron? Aaron? They wanted Aaron now to make them an image of the God that they wanted to worship and that they wanted to give the, the credit. You understand? And here we have the golden calf. You understand? The God that they wanted to give the credit to. Now, when you look at the hip-hop and bling-bling and this present end-time generation of lost sheep, you see it's one and the same thing. You understand? After 40 years, you understand? Things have gotten worse and not better. It's like they've, they've gotten worse than they were you know what I'm saying, before the whole civil rights movement, morally speaking, the moral, you know what I'm saying, sinfulness, you know what I'm saying, of the people. And it connects with what the first part of this Torah portion, reading and feeding, is speaking of. It connects with the money. It connects with the money. You know what I'm saying? It connects with how they are using their money, not just how they're using it, but what is the mind state. Notice something that happens. They have a golden calf, right? They worship the golden calf. So they take their gold, right? They take their gold to make a, a god for themselves. In other words, they take their gold, you know what I'm not to serve the Almighty with it, but to make something, you know what I'm saying, that they could call their god, that they could make, you know, that they could call their deliverer. But what's so interesting is that they understood, even as we get forward into this Torah portion, they, they well understood that it was not the idol that they made that had delivered them. Like most black folks should recognize, it's not the bling bling, you know what I'm saying, that many niggas got now, and now the whole bling blinginess, you know what I'm saying, it's, it's, it's not the bling bling that is... That is um, Delivering the people out, that delivered the people out, that brought the people to even this present state. You know what I'm saying? But they don't know, you know what I'm saying, the God of Moses. You know what I'm saying? They don't know the God of Moses, and they basically demonstrate by the worship of this golden calf that they don't want to know the God of Moses because it was not precept upon precept, line upon line. Notice what, what's going on here in the scriptures. When we look in the scriptures now, what Moses was told to tell, to tell the people, let's, let's bring, bring up Moses right here. Well, he was told to tell the people, he was told to tell them that the rich shall not give more and the poor shall not give less than half a shekel when they give an offering to the Lord for what? To make an atonement for their souls. And thou shalt take the atonement money of the children of Israel, something like, 50 cents, we could almost say, or half, half a shekel, in a sense, which would be half a burr, a burr, 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 you understand, the half of uh, the silver, the shekel, the silver currency, so say 50 cents, you understand, hamsa, hamsa, santin, basically, and shall appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. So this uh, shekel currency, let's take the golden calf and put it over here for right now, as well as this one right here, and get back to the, to the, silver, to the silver currency, 
this is the silver currency of his majesty, which is still our silver currency. So you see how we come to our own economy. Um, Marcus Garvey said something that we'd like to um, put into effect right here and remind you of. He said that the three things that the people needed were, were this. They needed a new a new dictionary. Well, I think he said the Bible. He said first they needed the Bible. Right, a black Bible, in other words, their own Bible. And our own Bible is a myth of Caduceus of Negus and Neges, from which we sample from in these teachings. You see the Amharic and the English. In other words, the King of Kings on this side, Yovasan on this side here, and, the, and King James on that side, so we can actually proof King James by a higher source, a higher authority. And he said the second thing we need is a, is a, is a, is a dictionary which meant that we need to understand the word and have our own language. That's the key that Slick Willie and Willie Lynch took from I and I, how to make a slave shows you that, denying them of their own language. So we're forced in this, in this linguistic um, um, anemia to make up a lot of crazy words. And, and you can see this, and the, the culture is striving, the people are striving, you know what I'm saying, even for their own African names. But what they are left with is, is making up stuff from products in Babylon and things that they hear and silly shows on TV that are basically written pre-programming by the enemy of our people. But you have to remember, where are the people's loyalty? Where are their willingness? You know what I'm saying? So this is all the, the, the test. You know what I'm saying? This is all the test right here. Not that God or Jah is testing them. You, you know, they could always say we prefer to stay in Egypt, but they're talking about coming out. But they're coming out and not leaving Egypt behind. So right here we have who may worship, this section, who may worship, and says, Thou shalt take this atonement money of the children of Israel and shall appoint it for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation. In other words, shall appoint it for this service right here, for the service of the tabernacle of the congregation that it may be a, here's the key, here's the key word, a what? A memorial. What is a memorial? Something you remember. In other words, so that Jah remembers the children of Israel because it's, it will be a memorial to the children of Israel to make an, a what? An atonement for their souls because he knew that they would do a lot of, a lot of folly. You see, an atonement basically is a covering. You know, like you have a covering, you know, you have a covering for the sin. Here the sin is not, is not in that sense, blotted out, but there's a covering for it. So that, that remember the judgment that was mentioned in verse, in, verse two, in verse 12, the plague? It says, when you numberest them, that there be no plague among them when thou numberest them. Because take that census, you have to to take that census, of the children of Israel, you understand, could bring, you understand, as censuses later on did bring a certain a certain plague, and that plague also would bring a certain judgment. Now, John had instructed Moses when he took a census of the Israelites that each person that was 20 years old or older, regardless of wealth, should give a half shekel offering should give a half of a shekel as an offering or what is called what is called that particular that particular ransom for for their souls. Now as we go further, John told Moses to assign the proceeds to the service of the tent of meeting, to their tent of meeting, their tent of gathering. Now John told Moses to place a copper laver you understand? A copper laver. I don't know if you can see this right here, but there's a, right down here, there's a copper laver. You understand? Uh, uh, you could say a basin, so to speak. A copper laver. Place a copper laver between the tent of meeting and the altar so that Aaron and the priests could wash their hands and feet in water when they entered the tent of meeting or approached the altar to burn a sacrifice so that they would not die. So we see there's a very important um, emphasis made on um, purification. So we have the element of water, which is, which is almost like a precursor in a sense to what we know in the New Testament as, as baptism. 
You know what I'm saying? As baptism. Remember when Christ, he washed their what? He washed their feet. So we can even see a sign within that based on this Old Testament, this Old Testament type. Because he Christ Yeshua fulfilled the Old Testament that which was shadows and similes. He brought an actual fulfillment. Now, John directed Moses to make a sacred anointing oil from choice spices, namely myrrh, cinnamon, cassia, and olive oil in Exodus chapter 30, verse 22 to 25. John had told Moses to use it to anoint the tent of meeting and the furnishing of the tabernacle and the priests. So all of these had to be anointed, the tent of meeting, the furnishings within the dinquan, the mishkan, the tabernacle, or the deptera, and the priests, the, the, the kohanim, or the kahanat themselves, Exodus chapter 30, verse 26 to 30. Now, Yah also, Yah also told Musa, Moshe, to warn the Beta Israel not to copy the sacred anointing oil recipe for lay purposes. This is interesting. The whole teaching can be done and should be done on this. Not to copy the sacred anointing oil recipe for lay purposes. In other words, like, don't try to copy it and then go out there and market it and sell it. At the pain of what? At the pain of exile. That's curious right there. At the pain of exile. Now, it's interesting that this is mentioned because the only purpose of somebody would copy that, it's like, oh, wow, I like that fragrance, I like that oil, I can make some money out of that. But he warned them on the pain of exile, which is another way of indicating, you know what I'm saying, the misappropriation of Jai's gifts and even speaking about that love of money thing. You see, that love of money. Because why would somebody be copying this for lay purposes? You understand? For some sort of profit motive, they don't want to go to the priest, so they're copying this. So we have to understand how there's a particular center, not a church on every corner sort of business. You understand? A church on every corner. So you'd be like, well, my pastor versus your pastor. That is not the way Yah intended it. And this is a part of our spiritual Egyptianism. You understand? In Egypt, they said that they had, um, they had, uh, uh, a, a priesthood for every god, every minor god. You know, almost like, can you imagine, it's like the churches nowadays. You know, you could go to this one or that one. Each of them got an, another spin. What, what they're doing is like they're fragmenting. They're cutting Jah. They're cutting God up into those 72 pieces like in spiritual Egypt. So you can probably get like 72 different type of congregations you understand, in the nigger neighborhood. You understand, know this one focuses on, on maybe the baptism. This one focuses on, on holiness. That one focuses on righteousness. That one focuses on the cross. You know, that one focuses on Pentecost. You know, that one focuses on the methodology, Methodist. You know, each one focuses on, a, on, on another a particular aspect. And more and more, the people basically are, are worshiping the God that's in common is that golden calf. You understand that golden calf, that bling bling of Babylon. And this is what they all kind of share in common because what's interesting is this, is that they'll worship that, but it's not the money. The money is a promissory note. Notice that? They would, I mean, let's get to that part. Let's, let's actually get to that part up there. But let's talk about the laver just a little bit more here. So we have the laver, right, which is a type of Christ, right, a type of Christ. It cleanses us from defilement. And from, quote, every spot or wrinkle or any such thing, John chapter 13, verses 2 to 10, Ephesians 5, 25 to 27. And we touched on verse 26 previously. Now, it is significant that the priest could not enter the holy place after serving at the brazen altar till hands and feet were cleansed. Now, all of these are types. All of these are types, symbolic types in, in the rawest form possible, but they have spiritual applications. So when we understand and comprehend the type and how it connects, in other words, compare Old Testament by New Testament, you know, by the overstanding in the New Testament, the basic, the basic idea is in the Old Testament, the basic template, the basic, um, um, it's almost like when we was in kindergarten, you know, and things were made large and big and colorful. 
You understand? But then as we get older, we begin to really understand why we were taught these things. It was, it was needful for us. We're not going back to kindergarten, but kindergarten is where we learn our basic ABC. So according to the spirituality, this is also true. So we have...